Well, one way that we can do this is by engaging our customers, engaging patients. How many people have read Seth Godin? Seth Godin, if you haven't read Seth Godin, phenomenal writer, and I really believe one of the gurus of the internet age, because what he does is he talks about interruption marketing. In, in where we are today with the number of messages that we see, getting in your car, turning on the radio, driving down the street, seeing the billboards, going home, going on a search engine with all these sides and, and Twitters and, and all these things, there are literally thousands of messages that an individual sees today. How do you break through the clutter? You can't just put an ad on TV and expect people to come. As one of the earlier speakers said, what I took away from it is you can't just build it and expect people to get there. You've got to go where people are. And Seth has some great strategies of doing things differently and really attracting attention so that people will come to see you. One of the things he talks about is, is dating your customers. So I haven't dated in many, many years, I'm happy to say. But when you're dating, what's the purpose of the first date? It's not to get married. The purpose of the first date is to get to a second date. And the purpose of the second date is to get to a third date and so on. And that's how we should be interacting with our patients, with our customers. You can't go on an internet site, or you shouldn't, and say the first time you see someone who goes on your site, hey, buy my drug. Because you haven't earned the right to ask for the business. We talk about this in sales all the time. You've got to earn the right to close. And it's no different when you're communicating with patients online. The more information you give them, the more information they'll share back with you. So you've got to give them good information. This was a study that basically was done. It's a little bit dated, but uh, MBS Vox did this. And they surveyed patients going into physicians. And you can see it's a very, very low rate of patients walking in and saying, I saw this ad. I want to go on the drug. People have learned and doctors have learned. When DTC first started in the late 90s, people would walk in and say, Doc, I saw this ad. This is what I have. Put me on it. The doctor would say, OK, here you go. Here's your script. Well, physicians now know that this is an opportunity to engage with their patient and have a dialogue and talk about it. So why can't we? And it's an opportunity for us to engage with our patient and to give them messages that are very important. In our dynamic, we have representatives that go into physicians. And they're not always looking for the same thing. So if we can elevate this together, at the end of the day, what are we in business for? We're in business to help patients. And conversely, what are physicians in business for? Well, they're in business to treat patients. So the patient is the overarching area that we have similarities. And we need to do that, and we need to be effective at doing that. One thing physicians have said, and this is a recent study uh, from TNS Healthcare in 2009, but where are they getting the information? There's a disconnect. Physicians are not getting the kind of information they want from the representatives. You can see that all of this is non-rep driven. 40% are getting it from the rep, but there are other ways. In fact, I was very excited to see e-detailing is actually now above, uh, above representatives. And this survey was actually not conducted on the web. So you could say, well, if it were on the web, of course, it would be e-detailing. This was done at a convention, four different conventions, in a booth. So they didn't want to bias the way the study was done. So it was done interactively face-to-face -face with, a, with a physician, asking them how they get information. So this is another study that was done by a market, a market tech survey. And basically, it shows the same thing. There's a lot of internet, CME, um, convention, journal ad information. So we need to make sure that we're not just thinking about the representatives to get our messages out, but there are lots of ways to be able to hit the representatives. So how can we focus on not just promoting but also educating. And I really believe that as an industry, pharma and biotech, we've done a terrible job of educating. And what I get very concerned about, and I was sitting in this 5,000-person this, uh, room listening to the president of the American Medical School Association saying, after healthcare reform, what are our physicians going to look like? Where are they going to get their information? We have, we're at the precipice of this transitional age where it could be that physicians actually become not, not people that are the smartest people in, in their college or in their high school going into medicine, but people that nobody wants to be a primary care physician anymore. They don't get paid very well. They've got to see 35 patients a day just to break even. Personally, my wife's best friend just took over a practice. Four of the uh, physicians she was working with retired. She hasn't made a salary since January when she took over. 
This is what medicine is about in 2010 and beyond. So the physicians that are going into primary care are going to be very, very different. And we have to help them educate them and educate their patients. And it's something that we can provide because if we don't, who's going to do it? I get very concerned. I don't think managed care is going to do it. Managed care is going to the physicians and saying, we're going to pay you less. And by the way, you've got to see more patients. They're coming to us and saying, you want to get on our formulary? Great, give us a discount. Where is all that money going? Is it going back to educating physicians? Is it going back to putting websites up for patients? No, it's not. And that's what I get very, very concerned about. We, I believe, have an opportunity to transform our own industry and provide this education to physicians, to healthcare professionals, nurses, PAs, and to patients as well. And just looking at the web, probably not a surprise, but people are going there to get health information. It's among the number two or three search term. So people are there. We saw earlier in some of the talks, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because there's a lot better information that you received this morning about the individual sites and about strategies for that. But one thing I do want to talk about is what's the rules of the new web? And this is very important because when you're putting together a strategy, you've got to figure out, OK, who am I talking to and how am I going to do it? So from a blogger standpoint, and I'll share with you one study that we've done within the blogosphere in one of our drugs. But only 1% of visitors actually create content. 9% interact, and 90% view the content. So just as Andrew said this morning, we can provide very, very good content because we have, we're the authority. We can bring thought leaders to these patients. And then we can distribute it out. So think about this, that 90% of the people going there are looking at the content. They're not involved in the conversation. We're very afraid about the conversation engaging, but it's a very, very small percent. So how can we do this, and why do we want to do this? An educated patient is a compliant patient. And everybody in pharmaceutical knows, and in biotech knows, that the biggest opportunity we have, and it's within anything in business, it's not about getting new customers, it's about retaining your current customers. We've got holes in our bucket, and patients are pouring out of it, because they don't understand why it's important to take medicine. A lot of times, we're very fast-paced society, and we want quick fixes. So what happens? We go in, and we take our medicine, and we start feeling better, and we stop. And it's the same thing with chronic diseases. People start taking blood pressure medicine to lower their blood pressure, or statin to lower their cholesterol. And what happens? They get a side effect. They get dry mouth, and they say, oh, I don't feel very good. i got to drink some more glasses of water every day. I'm going to stop taking my drug. Well, what happens? Blood pressure goes up, cholesterol goes up, heart attack goes up. They don't understand that it's, the side effects mean that the drug is working. It's a good thing. Maybe it's not easy to have dry mouth or, or you know, frequent urination or who knows what our side effects are. But it's a lot better than having the disease that you have, and that's why the physician has prescribed the drug for you. The idea of a learned intermediary is that physicians should be able to weigh the risk and the benefit and prescribe because the benefit of the drug outweigh the potential risks of the disease. 